My name is Nick Fouquet. I'm a hat maker. It's not like hats were ever out of style. They were just sort of a little bit forgotten about. And I think today there's a bigger resurgence with that style, with the hat. To me, hats were like the pinnacle of elegance. It's got a purpose and it can look really cool. I'm of the opinion that there is a hat for everybody. It just depends on your facial structure, eye color, what you want. And it's very personal. Hats are very personal. The first step of the process is finding and picking the color felt that you want. Primarily we use 100% beaver felt. That's the best felt to make a hat. We more or less take the piece of felt and we steam it. Steam is like an integral part of, of hat making. It's to sort of open up the fibers in the hats and able to make them pliable and moldable to go over a wooden block. Pull it down, stretch it around. It takes a bit of strength to sort of get it around. Once it's there, we take a piece of twine, do a special knot, cinch it down. We take a wooden handle with a bit of edge, go around the circumference of the hat, bring it all the way down to the base so it's able to form a break line. Some people come in and they let you go and be creative and do what you want. Some people come in with a very defined, strict vision of exactly what they want and we execute that for them. There's a bunch of different things that could go wrong. Over steaming to making it too wet, been a lot of times where the steam stopped working and the thing just like blew up in flames. And to me, it's like the beauties and the mistakes. It's just kind of adapting and changing to what you perceive as a problem and sort of making it work for you. What comes down to making a good hat and what making a bad hat is just like quality of what are the materials that you put into it. So I make sure that everything that I get, whether it's my felt, my sweatband, my thread, my needles, is the best and nothing less than that down the brim to really flatten it out to give it a good form of the shape of the hat. You know, like a UFO. And leave it to dry. I never always wore hats as a kid. I never had like, a huge affinity with hats. It was really an accident. One day I was just in Venice and I ran across like a cowboy who was wearing a beautiful hat and I asked him you know, where to get it and he proceeded to tell me that he made it. There was at the time 35 hat makers in America and 300 in the world and right there I just was like, man, this could be something so interesting. And I just really fell in love with it. It wasn't part of the career path. I went to school for environmental science and sustainable development, and my parents were like, you're crazy, what are you doing? And now I'm like, well, I love what I do, and I think that's the secret. Life has a funny way of just sort of bringing you down the stream. I grew up next to the ocean my whole life. It plays a huge role in the aesthetic and the design. Venice is like a very eclectic, creative people, and yeah, it's home. Once it's dry, we do the sanding process. So it really gives it a smooth skin texture. We sand around the whole circumference of the hat, the crown, the brim, flip it, step and repeat. When you know it's done, it's just like a sensation that you just know. You just have to feel, touch it, and then you just sort of intuitively know that it's sort of ready for the next phase.
We use a brim cutter to regulate the size of the brim, whether it's a three inch brim, three and a half, three and a quarter. You begin to put the sweatband in. It really holds the whole hat together. Without the sweatband, it would sort of deconstruct very quickly. A zigzag machine stitched the back bow in. Sweatband machine, which is like an overlock needle, goes around the circumference of the hat. You decide a color of a band. We have a bunch of different fabrics that we use the style of my aesthetic and what I want. You measure it up. We use just a simple needle and tack it all in and you get to the shaping process. For me, when it comes to the creative process, it's not like I draw up or design a hat. It's something you do off the cuff. The inspiration just comes from so many places to stick to like a precise course to me isn't really conducive to creativity. It's just really about like what you're feeling at that moment. Whether it's high crown fedora, low crown fedora, bash fedora, cowboy shape. I mean there's like numerous sort of shapes that you can do. It just comes up when I'm doing it. to distress it. It's kind of like an interesting process. You build something, to me, that is so beautiful and perfect and clean, and then you just destroy it. Like a mystery. You never know exactly what you're going to get every time you do a distress process. It's just different every single time. Maybe I want to distress. Maybe I want to clean. I love like a clean, simple, beautiful hat, but then it's also just really cool to sort of have those patina and those elements, the coloration. We put in the liner, a silk liner, and you know, the hat is pretty much done. I mean, that's a pretty cool looking hat. You know, what I'm doing with hats is putting my taste and my touch and my direction on it. I always want to wear something today that I could wear in 30 years. Emblematic of the brand or signature, like the matchstick is a trademark. It was just like an extra added part of what someone wanted in a hat and I just thought it would be interesting to just kind of break it up. The ride's been, been pretty amazing. Like, I'm very grateful. I'm just like full force moving ahead. You gotta wear a hat with confidence. You can spot somebody like first time wearing a hat and they feel really awkward and they'll look awkward. If you come in and you own it and you just know and you're cool with it, you look good, you look cool. The hats look good on everybody, you just gotta own it.